Welcome back to Biz15, the Yorkshire business podcast. I'm joined as always by Andrew Rowling. Um, and in this session, we're going to be discussing the hot topic, which is staff wellbeing. So the CIPD in 2020 survey report about um, health and wellbeing at work, there was a 37% increase in staff related absences at work last year and 87% of employees said that they had worked while feeling unwell. So that leads to the question really, Andrew, to, to you first off is, why is staff wellbeing so important to organisations? Well, it's critical, isn't it? I mean, what, what's the biggest asset a business has got? And that's its staff. Um, you know, if, if staff are absent, it obviously has an impact on, on production. Um, whether that be office based or whether it be um, in, in a factory or whatever, it still, it still affects the production in there. It also has a massive knock on effect of uh, the well being of the staff that's remaining because they, you know, they obviously have to pick up the, the, any slack that's within there. Um, it, I think it's, it's great that this is now starting to be seen as, as a hot topic because. For too long, people have just been expected to just sort of smile and get on with it, and uh, you know sometimes it, it's it's just really difficult for for staff to do that. Uh, you know, I'm an awful lot older than you, and I've gone through 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 times when you know it was that people just expected you if you were off ill for any reason, you know, it, it would almost be that it was you were grilled as to why you were off. Um, you know, fortunately for me, I've, I've had very little time off work due to illness. But uh, you know, I do do look back, and there are times when I've I've almost gone into work when I probably should have been off. Mm. Uh, and in that fact, now it's switched completely, where it's actually people will actively discourage you from being in work if you're not well. Yeah, I think it's it's interesting you say that. I uh, um, I had a tough paper round. <laughs> I, had a t- I, had a, I had a leader that was stood over me that was saying, you need to do this, you need to do that. But no, bringing it back, I, I completely agree. And I think, you know, if someone's, got, um, if someone's got a ridiculously strong and a ridiculously um, good work ethic, they're almost, they think that if they're ill, their work ethic takes over and they have to come in. They have to then sit at their desk and, and work through. And that must, doesn't necessarily mean a cold or even you know covid like symptoms or um flu anything like that that stems all the way down to to mental health stress um and and depression and and things like that that actually if businesses uh, sorry if if employees are having bouts of of sickness regardless of what it is that there has almost been an expectation to just crack on and to just do it and just manage it when actually long term that's just going to have a much more of a surely it's going to have a much more of a a long-term impact because you're going to be coming in you're going to be doing your day job you're never going to be getting better and you're then just going to be spiraling out of control potentially to have such a maybe a potentially longer period of time off work which then has a long-term impact on the business as well yeah, definitely. And, you know, and, and harking back to what I said earlier as well is, you know, that's not just that individual, it's, it's the, the business as a whole. Mm. And you know, if, if that starts to cascade throughout the, the staff that you've got, then that affects something that we talked about in an earlier podcast, and that affects the culture of mm. that business as well. You know, that, that can sort of have a real underpinning negative effect on it. Um, and that then can start to be picked up externally as well. So a business that at one time had a really good reputation can, from the outside, start to be seen as, why did that? Why does that business lose so many staff? Why do why does staff not have anything nice to say about it? So you know, there's a there's a knock on effect that's probably different from the topic that we were talking about or we are talking about and that is you know it, it does have a, an effect on that business. Yeah, and it all comes back around and um, like you said. Uh, a business implementing a positive work culture into their, into their organisation um, logically would would have some form of an impact on its employees around their um, around, around their well being because a positive culture then promotes positivity in, in the workplace, which is a much nicer environment to be working in than what something would be in you know a real high pressured negative um, environment that 
actually it might suit some people it depends on the personality yeah. type they might like that environment but for some people they might not like that environment and it's just going to have a long-term detrimental effect on on them as an employee and their performance but more importantly their health in work and their health at home yeah i mean it's let's face it we we all have situations where something might be happening at home that that's not great um, if you've got a work environment where you, you're respected, you're supported, then you can cope with that and turn that on its head. And you know, if you're having a tough time at work for whatever reason, you've got a strong support mechanism at home, then you can get through it. When you've got a real issue is if you've not got that on, on either side of it, so both work and home life are not good, then that's that's where you're going to have a situation and that's where as managers within a business as leaders within a business that's where you've got to be aware of that you've got to sort of watch out for those signs with people you know it's, it's are they are they suddenly displaying behavior that's not common to them and it's how how do you actually deal with that and uh, it can be scary because you know sometimes people are a bit afraid to sort of approach somebody and and ask that question you know, if, you, if you're not aware that there's anything physically wrong at work, then there's something causing it. And, you know, sometimes, you know, you can almost make a slight joke of this to, to sort of put it into context. And I know it's not a topic to be joked about, but I remember working for a boss once that if, if any, any of the female staff were ever displaying something that was, was a concern, he would always ask me to go and talk to him because he said, I can't cope with that. I can't talk to him. If they start crying on me, I don't know what to do. Mm. Um, fortunately, I think that, that that type of individual is not quite as, as, as common these days. And, and people are aware that sometimes people just need a physical or, a, or a, 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 just an arm around them, mm. and, you know, whether that be physical or whether it just be uh, a, a, a bit of a come here you know let's talk about it what what can we do to help sort of situation yeah i think it comes back to some of the previous episodes that we've done around um around leadership and management and actually a lot of the factors that have negative implications on your employees probably wouldn't exist if you just had an effective leadership style to be able to manage and mitigate and and communicate and talk yeah. that if you didn't have that in place then of course you're going to have issues. Everyone needs to talk to someone. And if you can't talk to your boss, who can you talk to in work? You don't want to talk to, you potentially don't want to unload some of the issues that you've got to your colleagues because if you're in a large team, you might not know them well enough. Yeah. Um, it comes down to trust. So effective leadership needs to play a massive part in staff wellbeing. And there needs to be um, an understanding from whoever is leading a team of people to understand that, these issues are going to come up. Um, you can't hide from them. You need to tackle them head on. And it's just a way that you tackle them the, the effectively to get the most out of, out, out of your teams and ultimately the most out of the staff that are working for you, both from a performance side of things, but also making sure that they're happy, that they're, they're well, and they actually enjoy coming to work. Yeah, well, it's a well-known fact that if you, if you actually show... Uh, compassion and care for for your workforce that you actually will get far more out of them one will work a lot better for you they'll work harder um, but they'll, they'll also have that loyalty to you as a as a as a manager as a leader and to the organization itself as well so you know that that will result in less absenteeism it'll result in less loss of staff so ultimately that's got to be a big plus for the business and businesses have to adapt and in the business scene is completely different now to what it was um, 18 months ago. Whether you're working in a small SME organisation like Brook or whether you're working in a global corporate business in London, everyone needs to adapt to this, um, to, to, to the new ways of working because it ultimately is going to be promoting well-being, it's going to be promoting that positive culture and it's going to be promoting productivity. For example, my um, one of my best friends that probably is going to watch this that lives down in London, he has always worked in the office, always been in the office, and then as soon as COVID came around, he then went to go work from, from home 100% of the time. And now he's got a hybrid style of working, so he does a couple of days in the office, a couple of days at home. 
that is great for his well-being because he can get in and interact with the um, with, with his um, colleagues. There's not that many people in the office anyway, so he can get that, get out of the flat, go to work, do the after-work stuff that you do when you're in London, and and, and you know be happy and and seeing and socialising. But also, you don't need you know, businesses potentially don't need to be like that. Some businesses do. Manufacturing organisations, obviously, you can't build something at home because you don't have the right machinery, but professional services organizations like us can promote that style of working and you know we do i have it brooke we you know yeah. we've got that hybrid style of working everyone works at home on a friday now um so then we can have that flexibility everyone's got the flexibility to work from home if they need to in between meetings but also we've got such a fantastic hub here to come in and work from and bounce ideas off each other and do our management review meetings and quality meetings and so on and so forth that it promotes well-being and it, it promotes ownership of, on people. Yeah, definitely. And I think, you know, if there's anything good has come out of COVID, then I think that is is probably, for me, one of the biggest things is that people have been far more aware of that. You know, I joined the business just after the, the first big lockdown uh, and actually just before we went into the second one. So, you know, it, it, was, it was a funny time to do that. But... I'd worked previously somewhere and, and, and the job I was doing, I was sat from nine till five in front of a, a screen mm. and that did not do my, my mental health any good. Um, okay, there's different things I could have done about it, but it's easy to do that in hindsight and look back on it. But it's as you said, you know, people's far more aware of that. And I think things that were learnt through, through that process where, um, the, the, the element of staff being together, as I've just mentioned earlier, you can observe people, you can see if this changes. If everybody's dotted around working remotely, it's far more difficult to do that. But you instigated something here when we went into the, the second lockdown, and that was we had a, a staff meeting every morning on Zoom. Mm. Uh, you know, it might have been five minutes, it might have been half an hour, it depended on what was needed. But that was that check-in. Uh, and then also, you know, we would have a catch up with one another or do a catch up with the other staff throughout the course of the day just to make, basically just to make sure you were okay. Those sort of things might not have happened had we not been sort of like aware of, of the impacts of that. But the thing is, is when you're in an office, what you don't realise, you don't realise the number of times that you you have a quick chat over a cup of coffee or or, or meet in the the hallway or something on your way to someone you'll have that chat which breaks it up and it gives you that chance to to just ask if somebody's okay just check in with them well sometimes coming to work is actually the release that an individual employee needs to get out of their routine if they've got isolation issues at home or you know they're single parent for argument's sake or uh, a single individual living on their own that has limited family networks actually coming into an office and seeing people is great because they have minimal interaction with people during the week because all their friends or peers or family have also, are also out working. So actually doing five days a week on your own, coming and, and being at home all, all the time on your own, especially during winter when it's dark and you can't get out and you, you can't do as, as many things, throw a lockdown in there when you've got um, when you can't even go out and do things at all, not even on the weekends, then that's going to be impacting well-being. And if an individual in that situation was lucky enough not to be put on furlough and was still working, then employers really need to or should have really taken a um, a bird's eye view of that individual, or of, of that team, or or of their organisation to say we're going to have some serious productivity issues here because one, they're not used to working at home, but two, the well-being of my staff is just going to bottom out and we're not going to be able to keep a handle on the individuals all the time because you know, you, you haven't, you're not physically sat with them. And I think, it's, isn't it, you know, mental health and, and poor well-being of, of individuals has been the silent pandemic that no one's talked about. Um, or if they have talked about it, they've not been able to see it. And... Hopefully, we're out the other end now that you know this hybrid style of working can actually promote that well-being of um, of their staff to come out the other end and and hopefully draw a line underneath it. And hopefully, we don't have something again at some point in the future. I think even just the phrase well-being, it's it's a more positive slant on it. Really, it's.